If you plan to heist on an easy target, thinking that the owner was locked in his house with you, only to realize after it's far too late that you're locked in there with him, what would you do? Alex, Money, and Rocky are three typical Detroit youngsters trying to make it out of the ghetto to greener pastures the only way they know how. Crime. Only it turns out that crime doesn't always pay, particularly when your mark is Sam Fisher's lesser-known blinder cousin. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the blind veteran in Don't Breathe. Eight. Fuck, you almost killed that already. We start out following a trio of hardened criminals, setting up the kind of robbery that would make George Clooney proud. They enter the target residence, disarm the alarm system within the 30-second window, and get to work. They loot all sorts of valuables, from jewelry to technology items. Then they leave their mark in the form of destruction and urine before busting the glass door and fleeing. They went from Ocean's Eleven to Ocean's Home Alone Wet Bandits in the span of about a minute here. Leaving your calling card in the form of any DNA evidence is beyond moronic for someone in this line of work. The real failure, though, is in the lack of common sense that they've just displayed. The breaking of the window and the subsequent alarm ringout will certainly result in a minimum of a handful of witnesses. This will very quickly lead to the authorities questioning how you could have had the time to leave your personal touch behind. If this was set up to look like a hasty snatch and grab, let's hope stupidity won't be these guys' trademark. Judging by how, right after a robbery in broad daylight, they're smoking weed with the windows down, though. <laughs> While the stolen items are likely in the trunk, yeah, I wouldn't count on it. The reason Rocky is all in on this lifestyle is to try and get away to California, along with her baby sister. This is also exactly why I would rethink my strategy if I was her, since I can't see her avoiding the authorities for long this way. You see, the reason these bozos had the codes to disarm that alarm at all happens to be because Alex here is the son of a supervisor at that exact same security company. And said supervisor seems to store passwords in physical folders in a filing cabinet. It's locked, but the key's stored just inches away in the shade of a desk lamp. Master access code scandals are one thing, but this is definitely worse. Security companies that have had any level of their backend's integrity brought into question have usually not fared too well, with a lot of them even going bankrupt when such scandals become public knowledge. I can imagine that the combination of not having any digital systems in place to store sensitive info, combined with zero access verification in the place where said physical files are held, would be disastrous. Nerds, I know what you're thinking. Is this part of the video, or only an ad read? Well, to tell you the truth, throughout the recording process, I kind of lost track myself. But given we've recently teamed up with DraftKings, who's awarded over $100 million in jackpot winnings, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel like a winner? Well, do you, nerds? Because if so, today's video sponsor might be right for you. DraftKings puts over 300 real money casino games right in the palms of your hands. We're talking everything from slots, blackjack, and roulette to live dealer table games, all without the constant smell of cigarette smoke and the feeling of random weirdos breathing down your neck. There's also a wide selection of exclusive games that you won't find anywhere else. However, if DraftKings Casino isn't currently available in your state, you can still check out their daily fantasy app to get a shot at winning real cash prizes all season long. Right now, DraftKings is offering new casino customers $50 in casino credits when they sign up using my promo code NERDEXPLAINS and play a minimum of $5. All you have to do is download the DraftKings Casino app sign up with my code, and then play your five bucks to receive your credits instantly. So, if that all sounds good to you, download the app today and get rolling. Big thanks to DraftKings for sponsoring this video. So, what's the next genius idea for these troubled young adults? Well, instead of just repeating a plan that works, something which no movie does ever, and continuing to go down the list of exposed customers in Alex's dad's customer portfolio, they decide their burglary career isn't quite where it needs to be. They clearly need a six-figure haul. 
It just so happens Money, the least trustworthy guy to ever walk the streets of Detroit, has heard of a rather public case with a war veteran receiving a huge cash settlement of 300k. Nice. I'm sure that would be a great target in principle. But let's actually talk facts here for a second. Dude's a veteran, meaning he may be pretty capable of mounting a solid defense against any home invasion attempts. He also probably would be packing if he lives around this area. Well, here's Kenny's house. In the ghetto. That means he's probably way more capable of dealing with us than we are of dealing with him. There's zero indication that this cash settlement stayed in cash. Banks, credit unions, and even VA banking programs are a thing. And that is a lot of cash to be keeping in your mattress in a bad neighborhood. I'm sure he'd be taxed on this either way, so I'm pretty sure it wouldn't make a difference if he keeps the money in cash or not. The settlement was paid out due to the fact that his daughter was killed. This also indicates he's probably less than willing to deal with a couple of thugs like us, and more likely to shoot first and ask questions later. Final point. Again, the case is extremely public. What makes us so certain we're the only ones to ever try this? Or that the veteran in question didn't foresee that since his case is public, he might be receiving a lot of unwanted visitors in the near future? We never have to do it again. Famous last words. Look, Alex isn't wrong. This would be premeditated burglary with tools with clear intent to steal. If the occupant or anyone else happens to be home, that's a jackpot right there if you get caught. You could be doing up to 20 years or more. He's also right that a case of this nature would certainly lead to the inevitable discovery of their little scheme, especially with how money keeps behaving like a complete moron on basically every job. Acting with totally sound level of intelligence, Alex refuses to be part of this one, as he should. Rocky then tries convincing him by begging him over text message of all things. How could you legitimately be stupid enough to even vaguely hint at something like this over recorded forms of communication is beyond me. Their phones would likely be one of the first things checked if they ever become a person of interest in this large series of burglaries that they've already committed. Considering money insists on leaving a calling card each time, I'd argue that's likely in their not so distant futures. So if anything, this would just have me doubling down on my answer. Alex is feeling hesitant about the whole situation nonetheless, so he decides to conduct some research. We could at the very absolute bare minimum try and figure out what this guy did in the military. If he was a grunt or any combat MOS, then screw this entire plan right here and now. His name is out here in this article in full, so I can't imagine it would be impossible to acquire some details of his military service. We need to get these uncertainties clarified to even entertain this target. To alleviate any of these uncertainties I just mentioned, the only real play is to stake out the location ahead of time and gather sufficient information to not only come up with a detailed plan of attack, but also to ensure that there's even a plan that makes sense to execute upon it all. If you spend two days outside this guy's residence and figure out that he's an insomniac who doesn't sleep, booby traps his house, and never leaves without a handgun in his waistband, maybe it's not your target market. If you see that he's totally defenseless and for some reason very nonchalant about his security, then, you know, maybe. There's just a lack of preparation here that I'm sure is going to cost us all later, but I can see why that would be hard to focus on when an ultra-abusive household is pretty much the norm for Rocky. Your lips look sore. That's how you're making your cash out there? That being said, I'd probably try Child Protective Services a few more times before devoting my life to crime straight up. If this is the main motivation behind her chosen career path, I don't think it'd be hard to convince a social worker that her mom is abusive as hell, or that her new father isn't such a good guy. You know, sporting that nice logo on his hand and all. Eventually, Alex, who was initially hesitant due to that pesky common sense, gets convinced with some help of his own fantasy-like thoughts that he may yet escape the friend zone Rocky has so firmly planted him in. At least, that's what I would assume caused his change of heart, since googling the actual story did not instill any wisdom in him. They're simping, and then they're simping so hard you risk more than a decade in the slammer. Bro, she ain't worth it. If you're gonna still go ahead with this madness, you need to prepare better to get all of these question marks out of the way to reduce your risk. Guy's a shot and hasn't left his house in like five days. 
whatever. The crew assembly stage is completed. Let's move over to the preparation phase of the heist and hope we gain some confidence in our setup. Once our even more budget Los Santos street gang actually performs the stakeout, we hear Money say that he's been watching the old man for five days through cameras. Five days. He supposedly lives alone and never comes outside. As he's explaining it all though, the man walks outside. What are you stupid? As it turns out, he's blind. They all behave like this is some major gotcha moment, but why? All you've confirmed here is that you haven't staked the place out for long enough. If after five days he suddenly goes outside, what makes you think there isn't a once every five days part of his routine that you're completely oblivious to? What if the next two days of the week are when he goes and buys groceries or something? Better yet, if he's blind, how are we certain there isn't someone showing up every so often to assist the man with basic life stuff? Until you've at least seen how he gets his supplies into his house, when, how often, etc., they should not go through with this. Deviation from the norm during a stakeout is only an opportunity if you can figure out why that deviation's occurring. Considering you're betting on $300,000 being there, you can afford to wait another week to be sure. They instead just assume this is their opportunity, or at least that's how they talk about it before doing absolutely nothing. If you did want to strike sooner rather than later, then this was the moment to drop some Valium laced hot dog into the doggo's crib. That way you can avoid getting detected when you do make your move. Hopefully sometime he's not at home. Hell, you could even poison the old man's canine buddy and strike when he's obligated to take the dog to the vet. It's 2 a.m. He's sleeping. They pretty much come back the same night, without verifying any of these little details I spoke about, much less reducing risk of detection by getting rid of the canine problem. And full of assumptions, they go for it, get up close and personal with the doggo, and decide to give it an ambient laced treat. Really dude? Ambien? You already know that this dog is gonna end up waking up at the worst possible time, when you least expect it. And karma bites you in the ass for being this stupid. While that's going on, what's our lookout doing? Why, smoking a lovely, intoxicating herbal treat that happens to have a particular smell you could notice well over 100 feet away, of course. Right in front of the man's house, too. Once the ambient takes effect, what do our genius burglars do next, you may be wondering? Well, they proceed to make a load of noise, from talking to each other while they tried the security company's spare key, to the dog barking mere minutes ago. The key also does not fit, meaning the man likely isn't playing around with his home security if he didn't trust the actual alarm company. With the key not fitting, they're now messing around with the back door and Money's trying to force the basement door. You guys would be so lucky if the old man actually sleeps through all of this, which I can't imagine many people realistically would. However, this here takes the cake. So the whispering outside his door when you've already verified nobody lives on this block whatsoever, the smell of weed when there realistically shouldn't be anyone around to smoke any, the attempted opening of the front door using a key, the subsequent attempted entry through the back door, the attempted forceful entry through the basement door, and the smashing of an upstairs bathroom window followed by what I'm sure would be footsteps in the house. Who the hell is that light a sleeper? Again, nerds, there's nobody living on this entire block. It would be pin drop quiet all around, just like it is in this house. Whatever, let's play along. Rocky makes her way in, yet again managing to disarm the alarm system within the 30 second window. That is after dragging glass through the house and making noise with her footsteps, of course. It does, however, allow her to open the front door for her partners in crime, who are having a casual conversation right outside the front door. Zero respect for an old man's well needed rest, but at least they do take their shoes off upon entering. They start looking for whatever an obvious hiding place must be for 300 grand in cash while still not making any effort to keep their voices down. Guys, he's blind, not deaf. Money sneaks into the old man's bedroom to deploy an improvised water bottle bomb full of sleepy gas, or something. As he deploys it though, the old man wakes up probably from all the noise these morons were making the whole time. Once this wannabe gangster makes it out of the room, he immediately changes his behavior to full-on party mode, without even waiting a few minutes for whatever substance that was to take effect. 
starting by saying done at the top of his voice just a few seconds after closing the bedroom door, likely before this guy even fell back asleep. What the f makes you so certain this gas is actually gonna knock the guy out? Is it poison? Because unless it's something that would also kill the man after prolonged exposure, I can't imagine there's a gas that'll just make you sleep and do nothing more. So either this gas is weaker than the garbage your neighborhood dealers got on sale, or you've just committed murder on top of your breaking and entering with premeditated intent to burglarize. Then he goes berserk on that lock using a crowbar, and when that doesn't work, he pulls out a pistol. <laughs> wow. Don't worry, he's not just gonna pop a shot off without any precautions. He's gonna use a water bottle for a silencer. Now, yes, it would dampen the sound of the shot a little bit, but it would be nowhere near as effective as an actual suppressor. <laughs> Even an actual suppressor would still likely make a pretty loud sound that the old man would hear. So I'd imagine that would be at least twice as loud as a properly suppressed shot. That would definitely be loud enough for the old man to notice, so you best hope that gas was some top-notch stuff. Who, who's there? Unfortunately, my weaker-than-your-neighborhood pharmacist assessment was correct. At this point, realistically, there's not many directions to go but murder and making sure you get away with it. Look at this guy. He's ripped. Just one look at this guy should clue you in that he is a bigger danger to you than you are to him. Letting him get within range to do anything, even under the guise of cooperating as a hostage or whatever, is far too risky. Cap his now, and then you can take your time looking for the dough. I get the feeling cops don't come around these parts. Hell, nobody even lives around here who would hear a shot or do anything about it if they did. Instead, Mr. Nordstrom calls this punk's bluff. The fact that he didn't do anything when the old man kept approaching him made it abundantly clear that he wasn't going to pull trig. This means he should at least create as much distance as possible. A loss MC currency gets to experience the poetic, albeit entertaining justice that is an M9 pressed comfortably against your temple while you beg your target for your life like a It's pretty clear from this as well that, uh, yeah, he's not letting you go, bro. <laughs> If you weren't willing to kill, you should have never attempted to break into someone's house while he was home. Had you staked out the place longer, you might have found a pattern of when this guy leaves, which he clearly did at one point, and would have been able to mount a more successful op. Now they've got a bigger problem, which is that the old man is a very firm believer in the stand your ground laws of Michigan, and that's not good for any of your health. I'm not locked in here with you. <laughs> You're locked in here with me! And with that, one of the three morons has fallen. So, what's next for Rocky and Alex? Well, kill or run. Ideally both. This got out of hand fast, and now you no longer have any weapons, while he has a firearm that he is likely very familiar with. Instead, Rocky decides to enhance the already incriminating paper trail by sending Alex a text literally saying she is inside the closet and that he shot money. She's just lucky that Alex is the patron saint of simps, because I would have left her ass with all of zero f given while making a joke about a money shot, pretending that I don't know what she's talking about. Even if I personally think that she's super cute, the fact is, she won't be able to outmaneuver the old man for all of eternity, especially once he locks all the doors again and repairs the damage to the windows. Not to mention, she was smoking a blunt not even an hour ago. I can guarantee that smell would lead Nordstrom to her like a dog to bacon. Speaking of bacon, due to the old man's apparently non-existent sense of smell, he leads Rocky right to all the money. He's keeping it in a hole in the wall, in what appears to be one of those crappy hotel safes. It's not even bolted into the wall or anything. To think a simple bank account would have made all the burglar's efforts worthless instantly. Once the old man walks away, they immediately continue their looting mission, since, well, they may as well go for it now that they're actively risking death for the cash. Hey, bonus, you don't have to split it three ways anymore. Alex and Rocky discuss their escape plans verbally, instead of using the text messages to their benefits here for some good old-fashioned non-verbal communication. They're also missing out on the most obvious tactic against a threat of this nature. While the old man is dragging Money's body away, they could use sound traps. 
Now would be an excellent time to put some music on one of your phones at max volume and toss it towards the other side of the house. Once the old guy comes looking, he either won't hear you making your exit or he'd take a few moments to figure it out. Precious moments you could use to escape. The movie even drops them a hint in the form of Money's phone going off, but they're simply too hopeless to learn the lesson. Instead, they simply go for it, climbing down the ladder into the old man's basement, under the assumption that he's gone deaf from that one gunshot. Unfortunately, they've forgotten one critical detail, their shoes. <laughs> This confirms there's two more burglars. I have very little patience for stupidity. The old man's quick to catch on, noticing his money's been taken. He prepares for war, just as our brainless duo in the basement stumble upon one hell of a twist. <coughs> this lovely lady trapped down in the DIY dungeon is Cindy, the woman who killed Nordstrom's daughter in a car accident, aka the reason he got the settlement money. She confirms this by showing the duo a newspaper clipping. This also confirms two things for our pro tags. You now have something that you could use to justify a call to authorities. Sure, cops may avoid this area like the plague, but I imagine this girl has her wealthy family looking for her. She'd likely be reported missing too. That may actually be enough to get the cops out here to come looking when you call this in. The ensuing chaos may provide an escape opportunity, or at the very least, force the old man to give you a lot more freedom, since then he would need to scramble to cover up his fritzel chamber. If this is his big secret, and I'd argue this one's more worth defending than the 300k he's got in cash, he's gonna be coming to look down here any second to make sure his hostage didn't get away, which also means that he would stumble upon us and likely kill us to keep his secret a secret. I actually agree with Alex here. GTFO and call the cops. That's best for Cindy too, since staying is likely to slow you down and create a ton of noise when you free her from her restraints. You're just all around not equipped for the task, while the cops would be. Because Alex isn't using the equipment in his head, and is rather using the equipment in his pants for the purpose of thinking, he lets Rocky Simp control him into staying to try and rescue the girl. Not that they'd know it, but the old man had a system set up to alert him of this girl's movements. Even without that though, like I said, this is his major no-no secret, so he would definitely be coming down to check on it. They unshackle the girl, loudly and clumsily making their way to the basement door leading outside. It's locked, but the prisoner points them to the location of the keys. Alex finally finds the right key on the chain and opens up the door to their freedom. <laughs> the freedom from their physical bodies, that is. His prized possession, the female prisoner, dies to a stray 9 mil to the face. Our duo manages to get away relatively unscathed with Nordstrom hot on their tail. While he takes a moment to mourn the loss of his prisoner, whom I'm sure was happy to be freed from this nightmare, these two dumbass just watch him go crazy. Nordstrom breaks the lock on the basement door shut to further reiterate that these thugs are not getting out alive before cutting the main power breaker. Now the playing field is completely evened, except Nordstrom's not new to the darkness. Alex and Rocky may think the darkness is their ally, but they merely adopted the dark. He was reborn in it, molded by it. He didn't see the light until, well, he won't ever see the light again, but you get my point. Alex. <laughs> How they haven't thought to use sound traps yet, particularly after seeing the stuff with Money's phone go down earlier, is beyond me. They instead just casually talk to each other, constantly giving away their position when they know that they're being hunted by sound. I also seem to recall one of them still has a working phone. Why not use the screen for light, or the back end light if the phone has one? How they've managed to not get caught even once before this is just astonishing. We see Nordstrom stalking them, expertly using his surroundings to navigate his house like a pro. Meanwhile, Alex and Rocky are just bumping into everything, completely and hopelessly lost, as they have no way of knowing where their adversary even is. And Nordstrom isn't a complete moron that constantly gives away his position. Alex's panting inevitably causes him to get grabbed, finally looking like he's about to meet his maker. <laughs> Wait, what? There is no way that that was 15 shots. 
Nice. I like how that punk was talking about the need to pack when going to rob a veteran, but he didn't pack more than a handful of bullets. Amateur. Not that Nordstrom needs an extra bullet. Alex manages to break free, but then makes the dumbass mistake of constantly talking to Rocky as they make their way out of the basement. Once they had found each other, there was absolutely zero need anymore for any sort of verbal communication. They could have simply walked away. To the top of the stairs, anyway. Speaking of walks, look who came out demanding his. See, this is why you don't rely on Ambien to deal with a canine threat, particularly as a burglar. That doesn't necessarily mean anything bad for them here and now, though. Alex's plan of staying calm and slowly walking away isn't that bad when dealing with an aggressive dog. However, in light of recent events and the fact that Nordstrom could show up at any second, it's time to kill the dog. I know, it's messed up, but their only legitimate chance of survival here is to kill the dog ASAP by just kicking it in the face at full strength until it's no longer an issue. Then they need to bolt out of the house and get out of the entire neighborhood, or ambush the old man with knives or any heavy objects that they can use as blunt items that deal a significant blow to the head. Playing hide and seek forever, even once the dog goes out of the way, won't really work. Nordstrom clearly set his sights on not letting you get away. So, it's kill or be killed. Instead, hesitating too long, they get chased upstairs deeper into the house and wind up in what I assume to be Nordstrom's daughter's bedroom at one point. They do get brownie points for barricading the room, though I feel that they could have used that dresser as an additional barrier against the door. Alex and Rocky then try to go for the windows, but they're all barred up. Wait a second. When they enter that room, that window there in the far left corner is not barred. Something's blocking it, but it's not iron bars. Looks like it could even be plywood or something basic. When Alex asks Rocky, though, she says it is barred, which is something that they should have seriously double-checked rather than just assumed. Because of their completely incorrect assumptions, they decide that Rocky will go outside via the vents, while Alex tries to trigger the home security system's alarm and serves as, I don't know, bait? I guess he's just some simp meat for the slaughter, since him staying here serves absolutely no purpose. And what do you know? He gets kicked right through the supposedly barred window, which turned out to be loosely secured plywood. He goes right through it with zero effort. Great. You had a golden escape route right right there and did not seize the opportunity. <laughs> And wouldn't you know it, the doggo is tailing Rocky in the vents. I don't understand why she wouldn't just kick it to sh right here, rather than throwing herself down the vents like that. I get it, it's a dog. That doesn't mean I'd let one kill me though. One or two solid kicks should do the trick to prevent you from revealing your exact location to Nordstrom. Alex wakes up from his peaceful slumber to Nordstrom shooting the glass around him, throwing him right back into the house he just tried escaping from. When Alex finally gets the opportunity a ton of insurgents would likely have given their left nut for, he decides to attack the man's arm. Should have gone for the head. Are, are you kidding me? He had no idea where you were in that room. One swift blow to the head with that hammer would have likely thrown him off hard enough for you to easily be able to finish the job. Instead, you now get the ragdoll experience. Alex is once again reminded of the power of sound traps, but fails to appropriately use the one the plot gods present him with. He could have picked up anything besides the gun there to kill Nordstrom, instead getting sheared. Rocky, meanwhile, waking up an event, decides she's going to make as much noise as possible as she painstakingly crawls forward inch by inch. Finally, she reaches the external leading vent opening. However, once again failing to realize the importance of stealth, or at the very least, any object that she could throw down the vent for distraction purposes, she too is pulled inside to serve at Nordstrom's will. When she comes to, she quickly learns what that entails. You see, Nordstrom fell off the normal path a long time ago, and the war, combined with blindness and the loss of his daughter, clearly did not contribute to that positively. He's a godless man now, who wants nothing more but to replace his losses. Apparently, the poor young lady Alex and Rocky led to her death earlier was being used as a breeding mare by Nordstrom. 
forced to carry his replacement baby since Cindy killed his daughter. I'm starting to think killing her was an act of mercy. Now that Rocky has taken his consolation prize away, she is going to replace Cindy. That means Rocky is now the one who's going to carry the contents of Nordstrom's nightmare fridge to term. Oh, but uh, don't worry, he just wants to hold Rocky accountable. Once he disposes of Cindy's remains underneath his basement floor, it's time for Nordstrom to get cooking. You see, he's all about setting the mood before he viciously violates people's personal freedoms. But no, he's not a he never forced himself on Cindy. He prefers more romantic methods, like a good old turkey baster. Fortunately, elsewhere in the house, it turns out this blind old bat didn't believe in the power of double tapping meaning he never verified he actually sheared the right corpse. Just like that, Alex is back from the dead and trying to mount a rescue for Rocky, because of course. He arrives just seconds before Nordstrom can make contact, finally aiming for the head. <laughs> They cuff Nordstrom and give him a taste of his own medicine before just leaving him? Dude, if there was ever a time to double tap someone for good measure, it's now. You yourself are only alive because he didn't double tap you. He literally bent his basement lock earlier. What makes you think these handcuffs on one hand will keep him down? If you kill him here and now, with all of that confirmation you've just received that he's an evil at least you can take your time leaving this godforsaken house. If you really, really want to do this, you should have at least properly restrained him with additional measures beyond those flimsy handcuffs, and taken your time to ensure you left zero traces of your existence. However, since these two cannot recognize danger no matter how obvious, the old man makes it upstairs before they could set a single foot out of the door, and caps Alex with his 357. Rocky, being the kind soul that she is, takes off running and leaves him behind. She even makes time for some customary smack talk a mere hundred feet from Nordstrom, before he reminds her of their four-legged failure at the start of this heist. Doggo Roido gives chase and forces Rocky into Money's car, away from her precious actual money, of course. The old man is not here yet, though. Why not just kick the dog a couple times in the face and be done with it? I know it's scary, but I don't see how you're any better staying off like this, while Nordstrom is almost certainly on his way to you at this very moment. It's all good, though. As it turns out, the father that abandoned Rocky when she was a kid was MacGyver. She rigs up a trap using the car's trunk and the back seat to keep the dog somewhat restrained before bolting out of the car herself and effectively giving this Rottweiler a muscle car for Christmas. It's odd to watch someone go to these insane lengths to avoid violence versus a person who's dishing it out like it's nothing. The plan does work, and Rocky lives to see another day without being converted into Roddy Snacks. She's even reunited with her money <laughs> and the man she stole it from. To give further weight to the fact that the cops must not give two about this neighborhood, Nordstrom drags Rocky through the streets like a medieval war trophy, determined to fulfill his twisted fantasies. Just as she's about to lie down and accept defeat, a ladybug walks across her hand. This is meant to signify confidence and hope as pointed out by her earlier story on her tattoo's meaning. It also conveniently points towards the alarm system remote control. She takes this opportunity to trigger the alarm and disorient Nordstrom. Once the sound trap proves effective, she goes to town on him with a crowbar until she manages to hurt him into the basement entrance, where she 300s him into the abyss. As it turns out, Nordstrom shot himself with his own revolver. With Nordstrom finally defeated, Rocky collects the cash and departs the scene of her many, many crimes, hopeful that she can achieve a clean start, just as the police arrive. Later, Rocky and her little sister are at the airport, finally on their way to California, when a breaking news report verifies Nordstrom made it out alive after all. According to the bulletin, he reported only two assailants and that no valuables were stolen. And just like that, Rocky is free to live a slightly guilt-burdened, albeit brighter version of life, free of any legitimate consequences. Only, there's no realistic way she's getting away with the crime, nor Nordstrom. Once the police arrived, they would have discovered the phone containing text messages from all three at the scene 
scene of the crime. Their shoes, blood, money's body, the damage all over the house, gunshots, the dungeon with the half full turkey baster, paper clippings of Cindy, and eventually forensics would find Cindy's body, and a ton more. Nordstrom would be getting the electric chair, and Rocky would be put behind bars for a long, long time, leaving her baby sister solely in the loving care of her degenerate family. The movie ends. Of our original protagonists, only Rocky made it out alive. Money was a tool who behaved as such and rightfully lost his life for it. Alex was in over his head and put far too much on the line for someone who realistically would not do the same for him, paying for it with his life. Had they simply performed a better stakeout, waited for an opening wherein Nordstrom was not home, or had they been actually able to go through with the killing once discovered, all three could have likely escaped with both the dough and their lives. Cindy's fate was always questionable, and while messed up, she was ultimately not our target. For these reasons, I think Don't Breathe was beaten. Moral of the story? You better be ready to turn that burglary into a murder.